Imagine this. The shelves are empty, the power grid is down, and chaos is spreading like wildfire. In times of crisis, survival depends on preparation. But what if the very government sworn to protect you is working against you? What if they're quietly ensuring you don't have access to the tools you need to survive? Welcome to the Prepper Blacklist, three items they don't want you buying. A shocking expose that reveals the lengths authorities will go to keep you vulnerable and dependent, while they preach self-reliance. Behind closed doors, they're tightening regulations, banning critical survival gear, and labeling preppers as extremists. Why? Because a prepared citizen is a free citizen, and freedom threatens control. These three blacklisted items, hidden from public view, are the key to your independence, yet they're being quietly erased from the market. The question is, why don't they want you to have them? Tonight, we'll uncover the truth they don't want you to know. This isn't just about survival, it's about exposing the shadowy tactics designed to keep you powerless. Stay tuned, because what you learn today could mean the difference between life and death tomorrow. 1. The electrochemical time bomb in your home. In every device, vehicle and backup system lies a component so critical that its failure can cascade into a full-blown crisis. The battery. We are taught to trust the sleek, modern power cells that run our lives, from the lithium-ion batteries in our phones to the late-acid deep-cycle batteries in our off-grid setups. However, what we aren't told is that these power sources are designed with a built-in expiration date. This engineered failure, known as planned obsolescence, is a deliberate strategy to keep you dependent and repeatedly purchasing replacements. The power you rely on is ticking down, not because of wear and tear, but by design. Let's examine the technology you've been sold. Inside that sophisticated lithium-ion battery, a silent process of degradation is underway. With every single charge cycle, microscopic needle-like structures called dendrites grow. These sharp filaments extend through the battery's internal electrolyte, piercing the delicate separator that keeps the positive and negative sides apart. Eventually, they create a short circuit, leading to catastrophic failure, reduced capacity or even a dangerous fire. It's not a matter of if, but when. Similarly, your heavy-duty laid-acid batteries are succumbing to a disease called sulfation. As the battery discharges, tiny sulfate crystals form on the laid plates. While normal charging reverses most of this process, some crystals remain and harden, permanently choking the battery's ability to hold a charge. Over time, this buildup suffocates the battery, rendering it a useless heavy brick. This isn't bad luck, it's a feature not a bug, ensuring a steady stream of revenue for manufacturers. But what if a superior alternative exists, one that was deliberately sidelined because it was too good, too durable, and too much of a threat to a business model built on repeat sales? It does, and it has been hiding in plain sight for more than a century. In 19A1, Thomas Edison filed US Patent 684204 for what he called the nickel-iron battery. This technology is a marvel of resilient chemistry. It consists of a nickel plate, an iron plate, and an alkaline electrolyte, potassium hydroxide, that is never consumed in the reaction. This simple yet elegant design means the battery does not degrade in the same way modern batteries do. The durability of the Edison battery is legendary. You can overcharge it, drain it completely to zero, freeze it solid or all it dormant for a decade, and it will still function with basic maintenance. These batteries have been known to last for over 50 years with some original units still operational after a century. They are true heirloom technology, not disposable commodities. So why isn't every home equipped with one? The answer is a cynical business calculation. A product that a consumer buys once and can pass down to their grandchildren is a liability to a corporation's bottom line. The recurring revenue that defines modern industry cannot be built on a product that doesn't need replacing. Consequently, the nickel-iron battery was quietly pushed aside, buried under an avalanche of marketing for inferior, disposable technologies that keep you coming back, wallet in hand. 2. The frozen smoke shielding you from extreme temperatures. In a survival scenario, your ability to regulate body temperature is paramount. We place immense trust in our gear, particularly the expensive winter coats, and sleeping bags designed to keep us warm. Yet the moment this gear gets wet or compressed, its insulating properties plummet, leaving you dangerously exposed. 
This is because traditional insulation materials are fundamentally flawed in how they combat heat loss. Heat escapes your body in three ways, conduction, direct contact, convection, air movement, and radiation infrared waves. To stay warm, you must effectively block all three pathways simultaneously. Unfortunately, that down jacket or fiberglass insulation in your attic fails at this the moment. Conditions become less than ideal. A critical vulnerability in a crisis. What if there was a material that solved this problem so completely, it felt like cheating physics? This substance exists, and it's known as silica aerogel, or more poetically frozen smoke. This remarkable material is a blue-tinged solid that is composed of over 90% air, making it one of the lightest solid materials ever created. Its secret lies in its nanoscale architecture. Imagine a microscopic maze of interconnected silica particles creating tiny pores that trap individual air molecules. This structure effectively halts the movement of these molecules, a phenomenon known as the Knudsen effect, preventing them from colliding and transferring heat through convection and conduction. The result is one of the most powerful insulators known to man. The insulating power of aerogel is not theoretical, it's proven and dramatic. Consider the famous blowtorch test. A searing flame, burning at over a thousand degrees, is directed at a wafer of aerogel thinner than a window pane. On the other side of this delicate looking barrier, a human hand can rest completely unharmed, shielded from the inferno. This isn't science fiction. It's the same technology NASA uses to protect the highly sensitive electronics on its Mars rovers from the planet's brutal temperature fluctuations, which can swing hundreds of degrees. Its ability to block thermal radiation is just as impressive, completing its trifecta of insulation superiority. With such revolutionary properties, why isn't every piece of outdoor gear and every home insulated with aerogel? The answer is a familiar and cynical one, durability is bad for business. An industry built on planned obsolescence and seasonal product cycles cannot profit from a winter jacket that lasts for decades or home insulation, that never needs replacing. A product that performs flawlessly and doesn't degrade disrupts a system built entirely on consumption and repeat purchases. The mountain of discarded less effective gear is a testament to the inefficiency we are sold as standard. The suppression of aerogel in widespread consumer goods isn't due to a lack of capability but a calculated business decision. It is a technology that offers true, long-term security, and for that reason, it remains on the blacklist of items that manufacturers would prefer you never discover. 3. The Unbreakable Web of Off-Grid Communication In any crisis, after securing physical safety the most critical vulnerability becomes information. Imagine a widespread power outage where the glowing lights of cities blink out, one by one. Your smartphone, once a gateway to the world, becomes a useless brick displaying two simple words, no signal. The centralized communication networks we depend on are fragile. Cell towers require power and a functioning grid to operate. When they go dark, society goes silent. This is the radio problem, a critical failure point in modern preparedness. Many turn to standard handheld radios, like a Baofeng, as a backup. However, these devices are deeply flawed. Their signals travel in a straight line, meaning a mountain, a dense forest, or even a large building can block your transmission entirely. Worse still, every time you press the transmit button, you are sending up a digital flare. Anyone with the right equipment can track your signal, triangulate your position, and pinpoint your location, turning a lifeline into a liability. The solution isn't a more powerful radio, it's an entirely different kind of network, one that the telecommunication giants would prefer you never knew about. It's called Mestastic. This technology creates a decentralized, self-healing web of communication that doesn't rely on a single vulnerable tower. Instead, it operates on a protocol called LoRa, Long Range, allowing small, low-power devices or nodes to connect directly with one another. Your message doesn't need a direct clear path to its destination. It intelligently hops from one node to the next, like a digital relay race, bypassing obstacles and extending communication range far beyond what a standard radio could achieve. Each device in the network acts as a repeater, strengthening the mesh and making it more resilient as more users join. The power of Mestastic goes beyond just range and reliability. Every packet of data sent across the network is sealed with robust encryption. This digital lock ensures your communications from text messages to GPS coordinates remain private and secure away from prying eyes or ears. 
This creates a truly independent communication grid that cannot be shut down from a central point of failure. It is a system that you and your community can own and operate entirely on your own terms. So, if this technology is so revolutionary, why isn't it at by major providers? The answer lies in its very nature. A communication system that requires no monthly subscription, no contract, and no centralized provider completely undermines the business model of the entire telecommunications industry. They cannot sell you access to a network that you can build yourself. This technology represents true communication independence, a tool that provides a secure lifeline when all else fails and threatens the established order, making it a key entry on the prepper's blacklist. Bonus point four, the graphene sieve for limitless clean water. Beyond power, warmth, and communication lies the most fundamental need for survival, water. We are told that preparedness means stockpiling bottled water, boiling questionable sources, or relying on pump filters and chemical tablets. These methods, while functional to a degree, are deeply flawed and represent another area where convenient, consumable solutions have overshadowed far superior, durable technology. Boiling water consumes precious fuel. Chemical tablets, like iodine or chlorine, are finite, leave an unpleasant taste, and can have long-term health implications. Standard ceramic or hollow fiber filters are prone to clogging, require constant maintenance, and can fail without warning, allowing microscopic pathogens to pass through. These are temporary fixes for a permanent problem, designed to be used up and replaced. But what if a technology existed that could purify any water source, salt water industrial runoff, bacteria-laden flood water with minimal effort and near-infinite reusability? This technology is not science fiction. It is based on graphene, a single layer of carbon atoms arranged in a honeycomb lattice. Graphene-based filtration is a revolutionary concept that operates on a simple, elegant principle. When a sheet of graphene oxide is created, it can be pierced with precisely sized nanopores. These pores are large enough to allow water molecules to pass through freely, but are too small for larger contaminants, salt ions, heavy metals, viruses, bacteria, and industrial chemicals to follow. It acts as the ultimate molecular sieve. Imagine a lightweight, durable filter that can desalinate seawater with the simple force of gravity or hand pressure, providing an endless supply of fresh drinking water. This is the promise of graphene filtration. Unlike reverse osmosis systems that require high pressure, immense energy, and produce significant wastewater, graphene filters are incredibly efficient. They don't just trap contaminants, they create an impassable barrier, ensuring a level of purity that traditional methods struggle to achieve. A single portable graphene filter could theoretically provide clean water for a lifetime, making it the perfect tool for true, long-term self-reliance. So why are we still sold bulky energy-intensive desalination units and disposable filter cartridges? The answer, once again, is a deliberate business decision. The global market for water purification is a multi-billion dollar industry built on consumable products. A filter that never needs replacing, a purification tablet you never have to buy, or a desalination system that doesn't require expensive membranes and constant power would collapse this revenue model. The technology to provide near-limitless clean water exists, but its widespread availability is suppressed because it threatens an entire economic ecosystem built on scarcity and planned obsolescence. This makes advanced graphene-based filtration a critical bonus entry on the prepper's blacklist, a tool for water independence they hope you never find. Bonus point five, the suspended animation pantry. Securing a long-term food supply is a cornerstone of preparedness, but the methods we commonly rely on are fraught with compromise. Panning is labor-intensive, requires significant storage space for heavy jars, and can degrade the nutritional value of food over time due to heat. Traditional dehydration removes water but leaves food with a shrunken, tough texture and a significantly altered taste, while also being susceptible to moisture reabsorption and spoilage if not stored perfectly. Standard freezing is dependent on a constant power supply, making it a catastrophic single point of failure in any grid-down scenario. These methods are a constant battle against time, temperature and decay, representing another area where we have been sold good enough solutions instead of truly resilient ones. There is, however, a method of food preservation, so effective it borders on suspended animation, locking in nutrition, texture and flavor for decades. This technology is freeze-drying or lyophilization. While the concept isn't new, modern, accessible vacuum-sealed freeze-drying systems bring this industrial-grade process into the home. The process is a work of scientific elegance. First, 
Food is frozen solid, then it's placed in a deep vacuum chamber. In this vacuum, the temperature is gently raised, causing the ice in the food to turn directly into vapor, completely skipping the liquid phase in a process called sublimation. This removes up to 99% of the water content without subjecting the food to the high heat that destroys nutrients and alters cellular structure. The result is remarkable. The preserved food retains its original shape, color, and most importantly, its nutritional profile. A freeze-dried strawberry looks and tastes like a strawberry, not a leathery chip. Rehydration is as simple as adding water, and the food returns to a texture and flavor nearly indistinguishable from its fresh state. When properly sealed in mylar bags with an oxygen absorber, freeze-dried food is shelf-stable for 25 years or more, completely independent of any power grid. It's lightweight, portable, and offers a level of food security that traditional methods simply cannot match. You are not just preserving food, you are preserving nutrition and morale for the long term. Given its incredible advantages, why isn't a home freeze dryer as common as a microwave or a freezer? The reason aligns perfectly with the theme of the prepper's blacklist. The modern food industry is a colossal system built on a global, just-in-time supply chain. It relies on your constant participation and consumption. A population that can buy fresh produce in bulk and preserve it perfectly for decades becomes less dependent on this fragile system. The emergency food industry profits by selling you pre-packaged freeze-dried meals at a significant markup. Widespread adoption of home freeze-drying technology would disrupt both of these massive industries. It shifts power from the producer to the consumer, transforming perishable goods into permanent assets. This makes advanced home freeze-drying a powerful tool for self-reliance and a technology that the established food supply system would rather you didn't own. Bonus point six, the personal power plant running on water. Our modern existence is tethered to a fragile and centralized power grid. For backup, we are sold noisy, fume-belching gasoline generators that require a constant supply of volatile, degrading fuel or expensive solar panel arrays that are useless at night or under heavy cloud cover. Both systems have critical vulnerabilities. Generators are loud, attract unwanted attention, and rely on a fuel source that becomes a scarce commodity in a crisis. Solar is silent but intermittent, and its associated batteries as we've established are designed to fail. We are trapped in a cycle of dependency on either the grid or on inadequate short-term backup solutions that create as many problems as they solve. But what if you could generate your own clean, silent, on-demand power with nothing more than water? This is the potential of small-scale hydrogen fuel cells, a technology that has been relegated to concept cars and industrial applications, but holds the key to true energy independence. The process is a quiet miracle of chemistry. An electrolyzer uses an electrical current, which can be generated initially from a small solar panel or even a hand crank, to split water, H2O, into its constituent parts. Hydrogen and Oxygen The hydrogen is stored safely in a stable hydride material. When power is needed, the hydrogen is fed into a fuel cell. There, it recombines with oxygen from the air in a chemical reaction that produces only two things. Electricity and pure vir. This creates a perfect, closed-loop energy system. The electricity powers your home, and the water byproduct can be collected and cycled back into the electrolyzer to create more fuel. There is no noise no toxic exhaust, and no reliance on a finite fuel supply chain. A hydrogen fuel cell system provides consistent, reliable power 24-7, regardless of weather conditions. It is a personal power plant, offering a level of resilience and autonomy that traditional generators and solar plus battery systems cannot hope to match. It is the ultimate off-grid energy solution, scalable from powering small devices to running an entire homestead. So why doesn't every home have a compact hydrogen power system in the basement? The answer is a threat not just to one industry, but to the entire energy sector. The oil and gas industry, utility companies, and even the manufacturers of generators and solar components all profit from your dependency on their infrastructure and products. An individual who can create, store, and use their own fuel from water is no longer a customer. They are energy independent. This technology disrupts the fundamental business model of selling energy as a consumable commodity. By keeping hydrogen technology complex, expensive, and framed as a futuristic novelty, the established energy giants ensure their continued dominance. This makes small-scale hydrogen power a crucial final entry on the blacklist, a technology that offers complete energy freedom and for that very reason, remains just out of your reach.